when you take an existing system that you have on premise uh, and then you virtualize it into a virtual machine an AMI image let's say or any other type of images and you take that image and then you run that in the cloud that's one way or the traditional way of doing it when you have an existing system you don't have time to or the cost or the personnel for whatever reason to uh, optimize this so you take an existing system you virtualize it and you put it into the cloud and you run it you can think of it as a as a drastic forklift um, just to be able to shut down and close down certain physical infrastructure pieces in your in your organization now when you take an existing system and you virtualize it uh, uh, there's different ways of doing it you can create a machine image from one of your servers that you have on premise or you can take pieces of an application and what they call containerize or take uh, not just uh, an entire virtual machine but you're only taking a slice with all the dependencies to make that application run in a virtual environment in this case a container so uh, containerizing or creating these docker files or dockers is one way of doing it to take an existing system with all the dependencies put it into a docker or a container basically and then take that container and you run that in the cloud provider that is part of a traditional cloud computing uh, solution but in my opinion it's not really taking advantage of the cloud whatsoever you're just delegating uh, who's maintaining the infrastructure but you're not really taking advantage of the cloud uh, the cloud possibilities in creating a system that really takes advantage of the concept of a cloud computing composed of many services or at least quite a few services so keep that in mind this is a this is something you will hear typically virtualization will come up uh, dockers kubernetes those kind of terms will fly around uh, the pros and cons will go into it a little bit later but for now um Basically, what you're doing is you take an existing system, you're virtualizing it. Uh, it will it will take time, it will take money, and it will take resources to do this kind of process. Because every time, even when you when you virtualize an existing system, it will take time and money to to maintain this virtualization. Things will go wrong, um, and then you will have new problems because now you're running in a cloud which the system was never designed for. Uh, and hopefully everything worked well, right? But we all know things will break. And so how do you maintain this once you move an existing system into the cloud? So traditional cloud computing, in my opinion, with virtualization, is just too many headaches. And why do you want those headaches? Why do you take on additional headaches? If, if you have a chance to have a greenfield project or something that you can start new, or maybe you have a, an opportunity to rewrite, to take a look at, at it, Remember what I said earlier in the architecture lecture. Let's say you have an existing system. It's composed logically of different parts. And maybe these parts you no longer need once you go into a cloud. Maybe these parts can be replaced by a service, a cloud service, so to speak. And so now you can actually carve out pieces of an existing system. And maybe you can consider rewriting a system. And rewriting a system might be much more efficient, much more cost effective and provides you opportunities to create new features in a much more agile way because the things that a cloud can provide for you. Um, so traditional cloud computing really, in my opinion, is um, it's still okay. It's okay to do it. And there may be reasons, you know, for many reasons uh, why you want and need to do this, but it's expensive. It has a lot of overhead, keep that in mind you have potentially additional overhead with your existing staff that, that you have that you maintain. Remember, your staff, unless you hire more people, your staff needs to maintain not just on-premise systems, but now also needs to worry about how to maintain it in the cloud. So you're taking on new, th new challenges for your staff, so it's not necessarily fair um, to give that additional burden. And so for certain systems, for your secret sauce, your core domain of your company, your organization, that you might consider to rewrite if possible to take advantage of the cloud capabilities. And we, I'm talking about 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, long-term visions on on how to take advantage of this um, 
this long-term maintainability. Yeah, so uh, with with this traditional cloud computing, it can potentially actually be more unreliable than serverless computing. And what I mean by that, we'll go into that once we go into the next lectures of one in serverless. Uh, when you do this traditional concept of virtualizing a system, system, put it into the cloud, you're opening up another can of worm, can of wool bath, so to speak. Uh, and so those potential uh, points of failures, you need to keep that in mind. Um, so when it comes to uh, traditional cloud computing and serverless computing, then we're getting into some really exciting areas where I think you can take even more advantage of what the cloud can provide for you, for your organization. And so really, like I said at the very beginning with domain-driven design, you should keep your customer experience as your top priority. One of the top priorities, I would say. There may be other reasons. There may be competitive reasons why you want to do this. And so after all, whoever is going to be the user of these applications or systems, uh, it you don't want any bad user experience and you don't want to add additional point of failures into an architecture where where you could have reduced this point of failure or eliminate eliminate multiple points of failures really the end goal really is to have a great customer experience creating great software at the end so i hope you uh like this lecture give me feedback if you like um uh, if you want me to add or remove certain parts of it but um Let's keep going and I'll see you in the next lecture.